Hey fellow Redditors, this is Travis. I'm here to share the roller coaster of emotions that I've been experiencing lately, and I stumbled upon this page thinking it might be the perfect place to pour my heart out. My name is Travis, and at 32, I find myself at the crossroads of heartbreak and difficult decisions, reflecting on how my marriage to Lauren came to an end. Lauren, five years my junior, was the love of my life. I cherished her deeply and allowed her the freedom to live life on her terms. However, life took an unexpected turn when she committed an act that I deemed unforgivable. Despite my reluctance, I knew that allowing her actions to go unpunished would only perpetuate her behavior. Thus, I found myself making the excruciating decision to ensure she faced the consequences of her actions. Reflecting back, I first crossed paths with Lauren nine months ago at a friend's party. Her beauty immediately captivated me and I was determined to get to know her better. I sought the help of my friend to introduce us and as fate would have it, our conversation flowed effortlessly. Lauren was not only stunning but also incredibly open about her desire to live life to the fullest. Her readiness for any challenge resonated with me and despite the warning signs from friends about her wild nature and changing boyfriends, I decided to trust my instincts. As we continued to meet and spend time together, I found myself unable to shake the thoughts of Lauren. She had a way of making me feel like no one else ever had. Within six months, I was convinced she was the one I wanted to spend my life with. To express my commitment, I whisked her away to a private island for a holiday where I had meticulously planned every detail to impress her. One evening, as the sun set and we sipped on drinks, I seized what felt like the perfect moment to pop the question. To my delight, she not only agreed, but embraced me with a hug. Little did I know that this joyous moment would eventually lead to the heartache I'm grappling with now. The intricacies of our journey, from the initial infatuation to the romantic proposal, all played a part in the story that now concludes with the painful decisions I had to make in the face of betrayal. Life, it seems, has a way of testing our resolve and the depth of our emotions. Sharing my story here is a cathartic release, and I appreciate anyone who takes the time to listen and perhaps offer their perspectives. The euphoria of our engagement spiralled into an extravagant wedding, transforming us overnight into the talk of the town. Our marriage was not just a union of two souls, but became a spectacle that captured the imaginations of many. The media coverage was nothing short of overwhelming, with news outlets and social media platforms abuzz with stories of our fairy tale romance. People everywhere were captivated by our love story, making us feel like celebrities in our own right. Strangers would approach us with warm congratulations and well wishes, a testament to the outpouring of love and support we received. It was a surreal experience that made us feel incredibly blessed and grateful. On the day of our wedding, Lauren and I made a somewhat unconventional decision. We agreed to maintain separate rooms for our personal belongings. This arrangement allowed us to sleep together at night, but maintain a semblance of our pre-marriage lives during the day. We both recognised that our courtship had been brief, and it was important to find a balance in our married life without completely merging our individual identities. This mutual understanding to respect each other's personal space and interests was a cornerstone in our relationship. We gave each other the freedom to pursue our hobbies and goals, believing this would not only strengthen our bond, but also foster our growth as individuals and as a couple. Our approach to marriage was one of mutual respect and independence. We hardly interfered in each other's schedules or kept constant tabs on one another. I was predominantly occupied with my business and adding more to my routine seemed unnecessary. I had immense trust in Lauren, believing she would take care of herself and communicate if she needed anything. This trust and independence in our relationship was pivotal in supporting our personal growth and maintaining a healthy balance between our individual and collective lives. It fostered a deep sense of respect and admiration for one another, 
underpinned by the belief that prioritizing our well-being was crucial for the strength and happiness of our marriage. In the spirit of celebrating our union, Lauren expressed a desire to spend time with her friends. To honor her wish, I organized a five-day cruise for her and five of her closest friends. I chose not to join them, feeling my presence might be intrusive and disrupt their camaraderie. I had no qualms about fulfilling any of Lauren's wishes, provided I could afford them as her happiness was my utmost priority. I believed that giving her the space to enjoy this special time with her friends would not only make the experience more memorable for her, but also trusted she would have a wonderful time and create lasting memories. Lauren continued living her life in the same free-spirited manner she had always cherished. Despite our union, Lauren continued her party lifestyle even after we exchanged vows. Nights of returning home inebriated became a recurring pattern. Concerned, I confronted her one evening, urging her to open up about any underlying issues. She confessed that the lavish lifestyle was overwhelming for someone not born into wealth like myself. Trying to empathize, I decided to give her more time to acclimate to the reality of being a wealthy man's wife. Three months into our marriage, Lauren maintained her separate room, and although she showered me with love, a palpable emotional distance lingered. The physical intimacy and affection we shared were undeniable, yet there was a missing connection that left me questioning if deeper issues were at play. I yearned for Lauren to feel at home, to trust me completely, and I couldn't shake the feeling that a heart-to-heart -heart conversation was necessary to bridge the emotional gap. Contemplating the timing, I decided to wait a week before addressing my concerns with Lauren, hoping for a more amicable and understanding conversation. One day, as I returned home early for some meeting documents, I noticed Lauren was absent, likely out with friends. A spontaneous decision led me to explore her room in search of clues or insights into her mindset. While sifting through papers, a fallen lipstick revealed an intriguing paper underneath, a private party invitation in Lauren's honor. Curiosity led me to scrutinize the details. The event hosted by a group of men, celebrated Lauren as the most beautiful woman ever who deserves the love of every man in the world. The party's location, a private villa owned by one of my business competitors, raised suspicions. Intrigued and concerned, I decided to attend the event to unveil the mystery. Before heading to the party, I called Lauren to check her whereabouts. She claimed to be having a sleepover at a friend's house and expected to return the following evening. Her response left me conflicted, as Lauren had no apparent reason to lie. Despite this, my intuition urged me to seek the truth and understand the nature of this private party that seemed to be unfolding behind closed doors. Given the freedom I granted Lauren, I initially trusted her assurance that she was not at the party. However, a sinking feeling prompted me to investigate further. Arriving at the venue, I discreetly made my way inside, following the blaring music that resonated through the air. Lauren's car in the parking lot confirmed my suspicions. She was indeed at the party, not her friend's house as she claimed. Approaching the front door, I hesitated to ring the bell and opted to survey the scene through a partially open window. Peering inside, I witnessed a group of men reveling, their laughter drowned by the booming music. As my eyes focused, I noticed the men in various states of undress, their attention fixated on something below them. My shock intensified when Lauren emerged, standing amid the men with only her panties, her hands covering her breasts. The situation unfolded into a scene of betrayal when one of the men kissed her, igniting a chorus of hoots from the onlookers. Blinded by rage, my initial impulse was to storm in and rescue Lauren. However, a sudden realization prompted me to take a different approach. Swiftly retreating from the window, I began noting down the identities of the six men, all of whom were my business competitors. The betrayal fueled my anger, pushing me to devise a plan that would make them pay for their actions and restore my sense of justice. Leaving the scene, I drove away in a state of disbelief, struggling to process the images burned into my memory.
Despite providing Lauren with everything she desired, including fulfilling nights in bed, I couldn't fathom why she sought such extreme measures for entertainment. Determined to retaliate, my mind churned with thoughts of revenge. The next evening, as Lauren returned home, I observed her demeanour closely. Despite the magnitude of her betrayal, she appeared calm and composed. Suppressing my anger, I played along, inquiring casually about her supposed sleepover. The challenge ahead was clear to navigate this facade while secretly plotting a retaliation that would make those who had wronged me pay for their actions. The burning desire for revenge and justice ignited within me, and I was determined to orchestrate a plan that would leave a lasting impact on those who dared to mess with me. As Lauren settled in, Sharing details about her supposedly enjoyable sleepover, I patiently waited for the right moment to implement my revenge. Once she had freshened up, I broached the topic of a two-week business trip, asserting the need for a personal secretary named Catherine. Lauren, unsuspecting, accepted the idea, and I called Catherine into the living room to make the introduction. Lauren greeted her, albeit with a less than enthusiastic demeanour, as I emphasised Catherine's role in taking care of me during my absence. As Lauren retreated to rest, likely exhausted from her recent escapades, I seized the opportunity to discuss matters with Catherine. Walking in the opposite direction, I deliberately placed my hand on her butt, ensuring Lauren noticed. In the ensuing hour, I detailed Catherine's responsibilities a carefully crafted plan aimed at sowing seeds of doubt in Lauren's mind about our relationship. The next morning, Catherine entered our bedroom to wake me up, leaving Lauren visibly shocked at her seemingly unrestricted access. Without giving Lauren a chance to question, I informed her that I'd be away for two weeks and left with Catherine. During my stay at a hotel, I intended to keep a close watch on Lauren's activities and gather detailed information about the men from the party. My days became a meticulous routine of documenting any suspicious interactions or behaviour from Lauren. I aimed to uncover potential connections between her and the men, gathering proof that would serve as leverage. Cameras discreetly placed in strategic locations allowed me to observe her movements, ensuring no detail escaped scrutiny. Simultaneously, I delved into background checks on the men from the party, compiling a dossier of their actions and potential motives. The hotel room became my headquarters, a command centre where I strategised the unfolding drama. Every piece of evidence, every observation and every detail meticulously recorded in a journal, waiting for the opportune moment to reveal the truth. The intensity of my plan mirrored the depth of my hurt and betrayal. Each action calculated to ensure that Lauren would confront her actions on her own accord and face the consequences of her betrayal. The countdown to the end of the two weeks marked the ticking clock, leading to the climax of my meticulously planned revenge. In my relentless pursuit of vengeance, I discreetly collected information on any connections Lauren may have had with the men from the party. Simultaneously, I hired a personal investigator to delve into the business and personal lives of the six men involved. Their actions could not go unpunished, especially considering the gravity of their involvement with my wife. While the investigator handled the comprehensive background checks on the men, I decided to personally spy on Lauren. Waiting for the opportune moment, I observed her leaving the house at noon, confident that she wouldn't be foolish enough to bring any of her lovers to our home. I discreetly followed her car to unravel her clandestine activities. Her destination was a hotel, where she met Matt Ryan, my fiercest competitor. Over lunch, they shared laughter, and I witnessed Ryan's hands wandering freely on Lauren's thigh. Shockingly, Lauren made no effort to resist his advances. After their meal, Ryan guided her to his villa, leaving little to the imagination about their intentions. Certain about their actions, I chose not to waste more time following them, relying on the information my private investigator had gathered about Matt Ryan. My investigator had provided details about Matt's fiance, including her contact information. I utilised this information, calling her from a phone booth and deceitfully informing her about a surprise Matt had planned for her at an address I provided. 
she arrived after 40 minutes and entered the unlocked main door, trusting the information I had provided. The shock awaiting her inside was evident as she witnessed Matt in a compromising state with a woman she did not recognize. Infuriated, she screamed at him and threw her engagement ring at his face. Matt desperately tried to convince her of a misunderstanding, but she, trusting her own eyes, announced the end of their engagement and the withdrawal of all her investments in his business. From the confines of my car, I relished the unfolding drama, telling myself, one down, five more to go. With Matt Ryan exposed, I replicated this strategy for the other men, obtaining information about their infidelity or orchestrating situations to catch them red-handed in compromising positions. Each revelation aimed not only to exact revenge, but to bring a sense of justice to the betrayal that had unfolded in my own life. The meticulous execution of my plan was driven by a potent mix of anger, hurt, and the unyielding pursuit of retribution. The repercussions of my carefully orchestrated revenge unfolded, causing financial losses and hefty alimony payments for most of the men involved. Yet the grand finale awaited, with a surprise party that would reveal the depth of Lauren's betrayal to all the participants. Sending out invitations to the men and Lauren, I lured them to a new venue under the guise of finding solace in their shared connection with her during these difficult times. The villa was meticulously prepared for the party, with one significant detail, the mandatory deposit of phones at the entrance, to ensure everyone remained cut off from the outside world. As the party commenced, Lauren entered shamelessly wearing a red backless dress that I had gifted her. Cameras, strategically placed, even in bathrooms, ensured that no detail escaped my observation. The festivities escalated with dancing, kissing, and an abundance of indulgence. To escalate the humiliation, I opened the live stream of the party, broadcasting it on every TV screen in both my company and those of the men involved. Their phones, safely deposited beside me, began ringing incessantly with calls from managers, families and friends alerting them to their unwitting participation in a live-streamed scandal. Silencing the phones, I savoured the unfolding chaos with a bucket of popcorn. In the two weeks of following Lauren, one realisation became abundantly clear. She never loved me. Her motives were purely financial, exploiting our marriage for the privileges it brought. While I could accept attraction to wealth, her deceit in acting the loyal wife while indulging in affairs with people I encountered regularly was intolerable. The public exposure not only served as retribution for Lauren, but also as a stark warning to the men who underestimated the consequences of crossing me. After collecting footage of the party, I left, leaving a message for Lauren that I would be arriving the next day. The cameras continued recording their activities sleeping together, naked and entwined. Some of the men departed in the morning, leaving Lauren as the last to leave. She glanced at the message on her phone and swiftly made her exit, presumably racing home to face the aftermath of her actions. The meticulously executed plan had not only exposed Lauren, but also sent a resounding message to those who thought they could toy with me. Having returned from my business trip, I granted Lauren enough time to prepare for my arrival. As I made my entrance with Catherine by my side, I greeted Lauren with a hug, but acted as if she was non-existent, engaging in conversation solely with Catherine. Lauren, visibly frustrated, eventually left the scene, indicating that my revenge plan was taking effect. In the following days, I continued to avoid Lauren, who remained unaware of the chaos caused by the footage. I strategically blocked all contacts related to her lovers, ensuring she remained isolated from them. Catherine assumed control over household matters, dictating everything from meals to my preferences, which further fueled Lauren's frustration. When Lauren confronted me about Catherine's involvement, I dismissed her concerns, praising Catherine's organizational skills and implying a change in my preferences. I wanted her to believe I was cheating setting the stage for a reversal. The next day, I suggested that Lauren spend time with her friends at a club, understanding her feelings of isolation. I assured her I'd be busy, 
and she could enjoy herself with her friends. Yet, unbeknownst to her, someone was tailing her, providing hourly reports on her activities. Trust was non-existent, and I needed her out for the night to prepare the surprise awaiting her. As excitement grew within me, I eagerly anticipated her reaction to the meticulously planned surprise. Lauren returned home inebriated around midnight, discovering me sitting on the couch with Catherine on my lap. Confused and angry, she demanded an explanation. With a smile, I asked her to join us, further provoking her frustration. In her anger, Lauren accused me of infidelity, claiming she knew something was going on between Catherine and me. I dismissed her accusations, instructing Catherine to leave us alone. Walking toward the home theatre, Lauren followed reluctantly, standing beside me. I switched on the TV, revealing footage from her night with all the men. The colour drained from her face as she comprehended the shocking revelation unfolding on the screen. The meticulous execution of my plan had reached its pinnacle, and Lauren was about to confront the undeniable truth of her own actions. Lauren's disbelief was palpable as she stared at the incriminating footage, unsure of how to respond. When she finally gathered the courage to ask where I obtained it, I casually admitted to recording it myself. Shock registered on her face, and she struggled to find words to explain herself. The room descended into an uncomfortable silence, burdened by the weight of her actions. Seated on the couch, I watched the footage with enthusiasm, commenting on various scenes. Lauren, torn between looking at the screen and me, couldn't decipher my emotions, whether I was angry or amused. Inviting her to join me, I motioned for her to sit beside me, and reluctantly, she did. As the footage played, her head bowed in shame. It became evident that she regretted her actions and was now grappling with the consequences. For two hours, I made her endure the revealing footage, all the while expressing amusement at the entertaining content. Lauren, unable to defend herself, eventually muttered a feeble apology. Her feeble excuse was that she got carried away by a challenge presented by the men, a challenge she couldn't let herself lose. Feigning empathy, I played along, suggesting she could have used her identity as my wife to extricate herself from the situation. Lauren concocted a story about not wanting to ruin my reputation, impressing me with her deceptive skills. I acted as though I believed her, letting her think she had successfully manipulated the situation. As Lauren walked to the dining table to receive a glass of water, I strategically placed the same invite she had hidden under the dresser beneath the glass. Her shock and realisation were evident as the glass shattered in her hands. It became clear she could no longer spin tales to escape the truth. Falling to the ground, she broke into tears, seemingly realising that tears were her only refuge. After confronting her and extracting a confession, I made the painful decision to kick her out of the house. Despite her pleas for another chance, I stood firm, understanding that forgiveness was not an option. It was a necessary step for my well-being and self-respect, a painful but crucial choice guided by the lessons learned and a commitment to avoid repeating past mistakes. Moving forward, I vowed to approach any potential relationship with caution and thoroughly test the worthiness of the person to be a part of my life. The betrayal by Lauren served as a profound lesson, prompting me to take swift action within a week. I instructed my lawyer to draft divorce papers, ensuring that Lauren would receive nothing from me considering the chaos she had caused. To expose her actions and discourage any positive future prospects, I orchestrated the circulation of pictures and videos capturing her unfaithfulness in the media. I took steps to tarnish her credibility, warning major companies against hiring her. Employing a private investigator to keep tabs on her, I aimed to make her realise the difficulties life would pose without me. Lauren's refusal to agree to a mutual divorce and her audacious demands for alimony amused me. She went as far as faking a pregnancy to secure child support and property under the child's name. During court proceedings, I presented incriminating pictures and insisted on a DNA test to verify the child's paternity. The test revealed her deception, leading to a defamation case being added to the divorce proceedings.
In court, she pleaded financial distress, claiming she had no income to pay any settlement. I remained unfazed, reminding her that she should have considered the consequences before choosing to cheat. This turbulent three-month period since our marriage had been filled with drama, emotional turmoil, and legal battles. Writing this account serves as a cathartic outlet to alleviate the hurt and pain that accompanied the journey. Reflecting on the past, I acknowledged that Lauren, despite initial impressions, was solely motivated by financial gain. The experience reinforced the importance of discernment in relationships and the need to guard against those who might exploit trust for personal gain. The reluctance from the beginning to share a room with Lauren turned out to be a blessing in disguise as it allowed me to uncover her deceitful actions. Realizing that love had blinded me and that trust had been misplaced was painful but I am grateful for discovering her true intentions before the situation escalated further. The aftermath has been challenging, not only due to the dissolution of my marriage, but also the tarnishing of my reputation. The judgmental stares and mocking expressions from people around me are disheartening. Carrying the weight of betrayal and navigating through the aftermath is proving to be difficult. I am reaching out to you all for suggestions and opinions. I am curious to know if you agree with the decisions I made in response to Lauren's actions. Furthermore, I am seeking guidance on how to move forward with my life. The intense drama has left me second-guessing myself, impacting my judgment, and any advice or assistance would be greatly appreciated.